President Trump has lauded tariffs for bringing billions of dollars into the U.S. Treasury. So where do the tariffs rank among other revenue measures, or should we say tax hikes? Senior economics reporter Steve Leisman has been crunching those numbers. Steve, where do they come out? Yeah, Mike, if the tariffs are tax hikes, they would rank among the largest of the past several decades. President Trump, having, of course, presided over one of the biggest tax cuts in recent years, also has created one of the biggest revenue increases in recent years. Here's the numbers. We look at the first year of different revenue measures from Treasury Department data. The $72 billion in estimated revenue by the Tax Foundation from the tariffs equals roughly 0.34% of U.S. GDP. That would be the increase. You have to go back to the first year of the 1993 Budget Act under Clinton to find a larger revenue increase in year one, according to Treasury Department data. Now, there's some of the other measures right there. 0.3%. 1990 was bigger in year one, 87 uh, 86 tax reform act, you remember, that was a big one, was bigger in year one. Now what we did is we look at subsequent years of tax hikes where they sometimes go up. The Trump tariffs would be the second largest since 93. After the 0 0.43 estimated to have been raised by the Affordable Care Act in year four. Of course, there are key differences between a tariff and a straight tax increase. For one, there's a debate about who pays. Companies and consumers can substitute over the medium to long term. Most economists and academic studies say, however, at least in the short term, consumers and U.S. businesses end up paying. If this were tax measure, there would have been a host of analytical studies about the impact by the CBO and the Joint Tax Committee. Kent Smetters of the Penn Wharton Budget Model estimates the tariffs will cost a U.S. median household about $500 to $550 annually. Finally, this is far and away the largest revenue measure enacted that was not specifically approved by Congress. And I was looking back to 1968 at all revenue measures. Um, about 30 revenue measures, only 11 of which have been tax hikes. Almost all of them have been tax cuts looking back over that span of time. Hmm. Although earlier, in, you know, pre-income tax days, I would imagine tariffs were a pretty important part of the government revenue. They were the substantial part of yeah. government revenue before the income tax. Yeah. Um, but, of course, those would have been enacted by Congress. Now, Congress, of course, has ceded a lot of its tariff authority uh, through three or four different measures to the president. So he has this right to put these on, which means that he can do substantial revenue measures outside of Congress's uh, authority. Are you supposing that these tariffs are going to be around for a long time? We can't do it, Ken. Uh, Ken. It's really interesting because... Um, when you do a tax hike, Joint Tax Committee gets in, they do dynamic scoring, up or down, depending upon the minute. Um, we don't know what year two looks like. Year two, you could have a situation, I'm just throwing this out, Canada and Mexico should fall off. Mm -hmm. You may have the extra revenue from the $325 billion. Mm -hmm. Who knows what happens with auto import uh, tariffs, which the president has said has backed away Look. from. You can't do this as a... As a program the way you would model something over five, six, or seven years. You also don't have the more enduring benefit of supply chains moving to the United States, if that is happening, um, in moving away from China, which is an enduring cost to China when they lose those companies right. because sub supply chains have been redirected. Right. So when you model all these things in, it's interesting to take a look at the direct impact, but there are also these... It could so go to Vietnam, other. it could go to the United States, it could yeah. go to Mexico. You can also just substitute away from the product entirely. True. Uh, it's a I very it dynamic uh, uh, change that happens. Um, th there's dead weight loss of companies who are spending time figuring out where to get this stuff from now and how to, how to, how to keep costs down. Yeah. Um, it's a very difficult thing, thing, thing to figure out. You know, it's, it's, it's risky to guess what the president really thinks. But I believe, like everybody else, he agrees and believes tariffs are not good. Okay. This is a mechanism, in my opinion, right. to bring about a successful negotiation. We have no other choice. What, are, what other pressure can we put on them? We're not going to go to war with them until it, militarily. So I, I think what's happening here is entirely rational, okay? Can, can, can I push back? I know we have a guest. I, very quickly, I want to just it, good. throw this idea. If you're the president and what you believe mm -hmm. is that you want to bring industries back to the United States... Mm -hmm. Does a temporary tariff get it done for you? Well, well, or do you have to erect barriers over a period of time? I'm not sure I want to bring certain industry back to the United States. Okay. I'm not sure of that. Okay. What I am saying is I'm very interested in overall the overall economy and the growth of that economy. And I would much rather trade a very basic industry for a dramatic business like an Amazon with its enormous growth and great, unless you come to New York City, yeah. in which case the screwballs here say we don't want you Amazon. <laughs> That's a whole other Which show, is a yeah. tragedy. <laughs>